okay so let's go ahead with our new topic ip basic again lots of things to learn in this topic ip basic okay so let's see features of ipv6 now large address space you know in ipv6 we get we never say infinite but we get lots of ip ad addresses okay and elimination of nat we don't need nat anymore you know we used to you know actually nat you know nat survived us my nat made us survive nat made us survive with the getting shortage of the ip addresses or vv ipv4 while transferring private to public and that's what we are using today but still we are facing a shortage so we came up with ipv6 no broadcast in ipv6 no broadcast multicast and unicast simplified header for router improved router efficiency compared to ipv4 header support for mobility and security transition richness we'll see all this stuff now why do we need a large address space so the internet population is growing in 2005 it was approximately 973 million users and today is 2012, so you can assume it was double, correct? I would say it was thrice also that. So, emerging population and geopolitical address space. More users, mobile users, phones, iPhones, then you are iPads, tablets, so across 20 million in 2004. And today, if you make out, it's a big number. Already 1 billion mobile phones delivered by the industry. Today, we see all the touch screen phones you get, the iPhones, correct? So they all are using IPv6 address. Transportation, planes, trains, buses, automobiles, everywhere we require IP address today. Consumer devices, billions of home and industrial appliances, home offices, your uh, malls and everywhere, correct? So, V4 was in 1981, it was published, the IP address allocation history. Then, 6% of IPv4 address space was in use in 1985, 4 years. And 2001, it was 66%. Today, it was 96%. So you can feel the heat of the IPv4, correct? Now compared to IPv4 comparison, if you see IPv6, it's 128 bits, longer address space, large address space. 32 bits for four or 4 watts down, that was IPv4. These guys also. So these were the possible addresses nodes, correct? We should get with IPv4. IPv6, the value is very bad, very big, 2 to 128. Okay, that's something like this. 3.4 into 10 to 38, possible address nodes. Calculator will not show the output. Let me show you. If I go on my Calci, I have my Calci over here, and I type here 2 raised to 128. What answer I get? Hmm. <laughs> Huge number. So even my Calci is not able to show me the entire value. Okay. So see, it's 340282366920938463436337467607431777. Four, and e plus 38 so it's a huge value that's what correct so 5 into 10 to 20 address per person we can get so so many for one person addresses we can get we can accommodate now see now the concepts how it goes ipv6 internet address 2001 colon colon slash 16 what is colon colon what is 16 what is 2001 where it came i explain you within some time okay see this then it's that 32. See, first it 16 bits, that's 16. Oh, uh, in IPv6, we don't have some red marks. In IPv6, we don't have some red marks. So, how do we calculate? See the concept. So we use this prefix notation. And I don't see now this guy say 16, 16, slash 32. And this is my network. <coughs> Excuse me. Customer 1, customer 2. One sec. So, now see, customer 1, double zero one slash 48. Rest all remaining bits, IP addresses, post addresses. So you can assume how much can you get. Correct? So aggregation of prefixes announced in the global routing table. Now V4 features address assignment features using DSCP and stateless auto configuration. Stateless auto configuration is a new topic. We will see that later in future slides. Built in support for mobility, like IPv4 supports mobility such as. IPv6 hosts can move around the internet network, return their IPv6 address and without losing current application sessions. Summarization, aggregation, yes. IPv6 huge address space makes for much easier aggregation of blocks of addresses in the internet. So making routing table in the internet more efficient. No need of NAT and PAT because that's why we got IPv6. We don't want NATing. No broadcast. In IPv6, there is no broadcast. Only multicast and unicast. 
And transition tools, yes, but if I have a network of IPv4 and the other end I have an IPv6, I can make them communicate, yes. There are some things like 624 tunneling. You see this practical. A comparison of the IPv6 packet header. He has got very few fields compared to your IPv4 header. The header is 64 bit aligned, which enables fast, efficient hardware based processing. Hardware based efficient processing. So, improved routing efficiency and performance. Faster forwarding rate. The IPv6 address fields are four times larger than in IPv4. Yes, but the fields are bigger. IPv6 header is of 40 octets. IPv6 header is of 20 octets in the IPv4 header. Correct? So if you compare the fields which are same, the fields which are not kept in and the new things. Yellow, yellow are the one which are same. Version, source, destination. Correct? Version now it will be IPv4, IPv6, source, destination. Fields not in kept, kept in IPv6. See, header length, identification, flags, fragment offset, header checksum, option binding, all removed. Name and position change. Traffic class. Type of service is known as traffic class. And total length is the payload length, next header and the hop limit. And the new field is the flow label over here. Okay. That's new in IPv6. So dual basic header fields, options and padding have been eliminated, correct? Data portion usually transferred to a segment. Fixed size of 20 octets. And option field is there? No. Variable length option field increases the size of the total IP header. This was in IPv4, correct? In IPv6, 8 fields, 1 new, that is the flow label, 7 similar to IPv4, but not brought from over from IPv4, new ones. Because the source address will be of 120 bits, correct? Yes, the, the name of the field is same, but the value will be different, correct? The comparison. These are the resources, you can get some more information of IPv6. Now, version is a IPv6 version, correct? Traffic class, your quality of service, QS, TOS service, which was in IPv4, correct? Flow label will be the new 20 bit field. It allows multi-layer switches and routers to handle traffic on a per flow basis rather than per packet for faster packet switching performance. So I will not check per packet, it will be per flow. Your flow is of HTTP, I will check the first packet, allow others, correct? The flow of is telnet, first packet is checked, others will be allowed. Faster. This field can also be used to provide quality of service, yes. Payload length, same as IPv4 total length field. Okay. Next header, of course. 8 bit field determines the type of information that allows the basic IPv6 header similar to the protocol field of IPv4, the protocol which is the next protocol, correct? IP protocol. Hop limit, 8 bit field specifies the maximum number of hops that the IPv4 can traverse similar to your TDL value in your IPv4 comparison. Because there is no checksum in IPv6 header, an IPv6 router can decrease the field without recommitting the checksum. So you just keep on decreasing the headers, oh, sorry, not headers, your Hops, correct? Source address and destination you know very well, it's, but it's of 120 bits now, correct? So simpler IPv6 setup compared to IPv4, lot of things being reduced. One sec. Now it's reaching you? It's very hard actually. <coughs> Then your IPv6 datagram with no extension headers and with extension headers. See here, this is your without extension, the TCP header. Next header is the IP header, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, IPv6 data with two extension headers, carrying TCP segment. You see the next header is the fragment header. Mm -hmm. Next header here it is the, your hop by hop option header. And this is your IP header, correct? Understanding? See. So, source destination, you know, extension headers. What is extension headers are? See. These are the extension headers name and their values, like hop by hop options, routing header, fragment header. So if you are doing fragmentation, encapsulation header, ESP, authentication header, destination options. So ex extension headers are optional. But if you add it, like see, next header is fragment header, that TCP, like this keeps on adding the headers. Okay? So see, next header is 0. 0 means what? Hop by hop option, this one. Here next header is says 44. 44 is what your fragment. So this is my fragment header. Fragment header says next header is my 6. 6 is my TCP, correct? This is a TCP header over here. So this header, so IP header tells which is my next header. Then this guy says this is my next header. And this guy says this is my next header. Getting? But these headers are optional, extension headers. The number of extension headers is not fixed. So the total length of the extension header change is variable. If 
I am not having this header. Hop by hop options. So this will be less, correct? So also mechanism to provide support for future services without redesign of the basic protocol. Now fragmentation. Now you know fragmentation. I have a packet. The Argo and Link is smaller, so I have to fragment the packets, correct? So we send to this guy. And this guy, he says that my Argo and Link is large enough, but I am not going to reconstruct the packets. Who will reconstruct the packets? The server. The end receiving device. Now his work is to reassemble the packets. So he will reconstruct the packets, getting? So, you know, it's an interview question. There is outer fragmentation? Yes. If the packet was larger over here, but this Argo and Link is smaller, so he will fragment it, send it over this guy. But this guy is not going to reconstruct the packets. The end device will reconstruct it. Okay, so fragment offset field identifies the order, remember, which was in IPv4. Okay, so now MTU discovery. How do you discover the MTU? See this guy. This guy empties 1500, 1500, but this is 1350 and this is 400. So how it goes? In IPv4, how does handle hundred fragmentation causing a variety of processing issues? Now, how? See here. IPv6 routers no longer perform fragmentation. They don't do it. So, you know, you know what is happening? See guys, this guy sends a packet with MTU 1500. This guy used to send an error, like packet too big, empty is 1350. Then he sends a packet with 1350, so it goes over here, correct? So see, the packet is reached till here, then he gets the error that packet is too large. So he used to send a smaller packet, correct? Yeah. So this used to happen in IPv4. It used, but in IPv6, it used a discovery process used to determine the optimum MTU to use. So before here, they used the discovery procedure. So how see here? So IPv6 device attempts to send a packet at a size that is specified in the upper IP header, upper layers, okay? So if the device receives an internet ICMP message, packet too big message, something like this, can you see here, like this. So it reassembles the MTU discard packet with a smaller MTU. So this process is repeated until the device receives a response that discards the packet arrived intact. So see here, first I send a packet of 1500, but over here it went and I get an error, it's too big. Then I send a smaller packet. So it has been received to the end device, then I say packet received. This process is followed in IPv6, IPv4. which was not done IPv4. In IPv4, how does to fragment the packet? So here they have the discovery procedure, MTU discovery, okay? The device then sets the MTU for the session, okay? So in IPv6 fragmentation is not only performed by the device sending a datagram, nor by routers. So interview question, IPv6 routers or UVR device doesn't do fragmentation, okay? Now the addressing in enterprise network in IPv6. It's a 128-bit address space. So they are break up in, not into octets. They are break up into your blocks. Each block is of 16 seg bit segments. Like right, these are eight blocks, eight 16 bit segments. So you can call them segments, okay, or some say block. Now each segment is written in hexadecimal. So I can see the value from 0000, 0, 0, 0 to FFFF, several by columns. You know the decimal binary concept, mm -hmm. hexadecimal. So an example of IPv6 address, awesome. 3 F F E colon 9 So if you see hexadecimal, segment 1, segment 2, segment 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Each of 16 bits, total 120 bits. Doesn't it look tough to remember this address? We had a habit of IPv4 decimal, but of course you have to make a habit now. See the hex binary, I hope you know these values. Yes. Simple. So now how to write this guy? How to write this entire stuff in a smaller way? Correct? Can you see some zeros over here? Mm. Okay. So rule number one says leading zeros. Uh, two rules to reduce the size of written IPv6 address. I am saying not reducing that, no, make it smaller. Just while writing, how can it in a smaller format? First rule says, the leading zeros in an IP 16-bit segment do not have to be written if any bit segment has fewer than four hexadecimal digits. It is assumed that the missing digits are leading zeros. Let me go back. MC leading zero over here, leading zeros. I am not saying the previous. If I remove this, then there is an issue, correct? Yes. This here is zeros. These zeros, can you see? Yes. Not this one. So this one is to these three and this one. I can, if I don't write them, it's still okay. So I can make out data my zeros over there. You see, example. This I can write in this way now. Getting? So all, again, one like this. Correct? Now, practice. See this. I can drop this zero and block this three, but I can't block this three. What about these two? Would I put zero and zero? Yes. But there is still more short order I show you. I can just put a column column over here. Let me show you. Okay. See, this is the one you are writing. Mm. And see again this reading, I drop it. So this is the first rule we are playing with. Second rule I have not showed you till now. And again see here. Now again, you know, if it's, uh, there, these guys are continuous zeros, correct? 
see I saw I showed you a first two letters of leading zeros correct so this I wrote in this manner this I wrote in this manner this one in this manner correct mm -hmm. but what about these guys see they all are zeros should I write zeros like this yes but there is a rule number two okay now only leading zeros cannot be omitted telling zeros cannot okay? only zeros uh, can be omitted correct telling zeros cannot be omitted because doing so will make the segment ambiguous because see why see something like this if you drop these guys also so see you won't be not be able to tell whether the missing zeros belong to before or after correct now see correct original address this is the original address correct hmm. this one yes. and if i drop this guy also okay now see wrong ambiguous original address i can put it like this also in this one zero 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 correct after looking at this i can put v one zero back and eight triple zeros correct so if I block draw back side zeros, okay, the ending zeros, what will happen? It will be a issue, correct? Hmm. So this is the wrong answer, correct? Yeah. So always you drop the leading zeros, leading. not the back zeros. Back zero. Ending zero, you don't do it. Second says double colons, like equals this one. The second rule can reduce the address even further. Any single contiguous string of one or more 16 bit segments consisting of all zeros can be presented with a double colon. Now see, these all are zeros, correct? In short, I can add in this manner. I can write this manner, that's correct. Still shorter. I can add this. See, FF0 to colon colon 5 means in between all the six segments are zeros. Getting? Yes. Understanding? Any doubts? No, sir. Simple? No. Now, let's see some examples. Now we have to apply both the rules, okay? okay. So see here. I can drop this zero, yes. yes. What about here and here? Mm -hmm. Here I will drop this. Now what? Should I put colon colon? Mm -hmm. Colon colon one four. Colon colon ninety five. That's wrong. See, because if I put colon like this and I put colon over here, how can I make you how many segments are zero and how many segments are over here? I can say there are two two, correct? It can be one and three also. It can be one over here and three over there also. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. This is the right way to write. Instead of these two, I put colon over here. 14. 10, 10, 90. Okay. So this will be something like this. In short. Getting? Or put 0, 0 over here and colon over here. So this is the perfect way of writing. Because if I put colon on both the ends, I can't make out how many segments are here and here. Correct? Okay. Here is one segment, here three, or here one, here three, or two, or two. So it's again we can't decide. So we have to define in this manner. Okay. Another example. See, there's only one over here and there are two over here. So over here I keep one zero. One zero. Here colon. Correct. Yes. Like this. Understood. Yes. So these are some examples. See, now this is illegal. We are just saying correct. Yes. Illegal because the length of the all of the two all zero strings is ambiguous. It could represent any of the one following. It can be like this. Hmm. It can be like this. Three and one. It can be one and three like this, so you can make out understanding. You got it? Yes. So now the prefixes. I before used to have submit mass and we should write that in a CID format slash 24 notation, correct? The prefix value. So IP V6 prefix is always identity identified by bit count. Over here we show a network portion, remember the dotted decimal or bit count. Over here also we have a bit count, but the address is followed by a power slash and a decimal number indicating how many of the first bits of the address are the prefix bits? That is, how many bits are the prefix bits? See here. If I write like this, that's 64. That means 16, the 16, the 16, the 16. The 64 bits. The first four segments. Total 64 bits. Okay. Understanding? So, any doubts to the other notation, how it is in IPv6? This way. Okay. Now, an IPv6 address consists of all zeros can be written simply with a double colon. See, like this, default address. You know default address called 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 space 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, IP route, remember, default route. Default. I can write in this manner. Okay, now there are two cases when all zeros address is used. The one is default address. The address is at all zeros and the prefix is also 0, the default address. Second, unspecified address, which is used in some neighbor discovery protocol. You see this data. An unspecified address is a filler indicating the absence of a real IPv6 address. So, this is also a new thing to us. We'll see that data. Okay. So, when writing an unspecified address, it is differentiated from a default address by the prefix slash 128. The difference is what? This one. Yes, sir. Okay. 
okay now the command see interface will back zero command you are similar ipv6 is ipv is ipv6 address and the exact same value but see here question mark you have to define your bits can you see here slash so you define your 64 so out of this for 64 will you define my prefix bits correct network portion we see this more later okay now the interface identifiers in ipv6 address what is this now we will see this entire stuff uh, in ipv6 a link is a network medium or with the network nodes communicate correct link is what a uh, network medium correct now we can have ethernet frame relay ppp hdlc all these things correct it in interface identifier is a in ipv6 address how it is used see now it says global routing prefix of 48 bits subnet id of 16 bits and your interface id how is the interface id is calculated let's see now interface id is used to identify unique interface on a link interface id is used to identify unique interface unique means single so throughout as a host portion of an ipv6 address how it goes see it's very awesome what is required to be unique on a link on a link between means between two routers correct it has to be unique it is always 64 bits that's okay and maybe dynamically created based on layer 2 media and encapsulation layer 2 media means your serial link or your partial link correct partial link now see how it is how it is generated see now this is the mac address can you see this is the mac address of my ethernet interface the resulting eui 64 interface id now this will be created into this thing how let me show you this value can you see here mac address is of 48 bits is of 48 bits correct this mac is a 48 bits remember ah, 48 bits. Ah. now this interface is 64 bits correct ah. so how many bits are missing 16 bits yeah. so to fill the 16 bits we insert this value in the middle can you see f f f p in the middle so see okay. i written this value into binary the mac address is written into binary something like this so see this 0 0 it's 16 zeros then o b o a something like this and 2 d 5 1 this one correct mm -hmm. so now this is the seventh bit which is called the ul bit we'll talk on this a bit later you can see here in between i'm putting this value f f f p Instead, in the middle of the MAC address, so between B 0B and 0A, this is the pointer. Mm -hmm. And see the pointer. This means between this, I'm putting this value, FFFE. This thing. See, between this, between this, I'm putting this value, FFFE, the binary. Mm -hmm. When I convert it to decimal, uh, sorry, hexadecimal, mm -hmm. see this. And the UL bit, can you see here, it was 0, I flip it to 1. I'll talk on this bit very soon. Okay? Data any layer added defines how IPVC interface identifies the period. <coughs> And how neighbor discovery deals with data link and uh, address and resolution. So we'll see this very f within some time. So when I convert this to the decimal, I get this value: 0200BFF, FE0A, 2D51. So see, 2D51 is okay. Between 0B0A, it is FFFE in the middle, correct? Yes. Sir. But after this 0000, it is something 0200. How it came? I just show you in some time in the further slides, okay? So let's look at the process. See, ya. calculating MAC address. MAC address binary. I have written this MAC address binary. Yeah. The seventh bit is known as UL bit. Okay. Yeah. See, we'll see that. The eighth bit of an IPv6 identifier, also known as a G bit, is the group individual bit for managing groups. The eighth bit. Okay, in this. Now I'm just coming over there. Now we are putting this value in the middle. FFFP, correct? Yeah. Now see this UL bit. Can you see here? UL bit flipped means zero. This seventh bit was flipped to one. This one on. See the seventh bit. I flip it to one. It is flipped. Okay. So now, if you see binary wise, this is zero. Oh, this is one. This is two. Correct. Uh -huh. This value is two. Correct. Uh -huh. It will be zero two. It is become zero two zero zero. Can you see this? Uh -huh. Understanding why it become two? Why it become two? Because of this zero two. Because it, the seventh bit is flipped to one. Okay. Understanding? Okay. So, see this. Same way, some more examples like. Where the byte configure seven bit zero f bit to one. See this bit. The un it's called as UL bit, called as universally locally bit. Universally or locally. It's a seven bit of the first byte and is used to define whether the address is universal or locally administered. Okay, UL bit. It's called as UL bit, correct? If you see here, what is read here? UL bit. Universally or locally. What is universally administered or locally administered? Okay. So now if zero, the IT body through the designation of a unique company ID has administered the address. Okay. And if it's one, the address is locally administered. So we'll make it one, correct? So we look at the it. The data administrator has overridden the manufacturer address and specified a different address. That's why we become two, zero two, correct? Yes. That's why in this previous example it became zero two. two. Yes, zero zero one zero two actually. Yes, sir. Okay, got it? 
yes, so it seems to be some debate whether Cisco should fit it or not already but yes we are doing it actually okay now see this so when I am typing an IP address see I type my first 64 bits correct colon colon I said question mark so what I am saying see I am writing the half IP address what will be the half IP address it will be my interface identifier how it will be calculated automatically by the router see here can I see the option EUR64 <coughs> correct because this format is known as what EUR64 format correct that uh -huh. stands for extended unique identifier correct is known as extended okay. unique identifi identifier so so when I type a command on my router something like this so when I hit enter my router will get this address can you see this 008 till 42810 that's okay then on the basis of my MAC address see the further value 21B D55 FFF in the middle 5B A408 understanding and it's AUI so this you also again assign the IP address to interface so just give the half part what you want to define the global prefix and the subnet ID and remaining just do it that router calculates own unique identifier understanding so this is one as unique identifier getting so see subnet was something like this this is my MAC address 001B D55B so see I just said it will be 20 1B D5 FE FF -F -F -E B5 can you see here FF -F -F -E B5 and then A408 got it uh -huh. this was what done correct uh -huh. see with this value in the middle and why this 00 becomes 02 because of the flipping of the bit 7 bit the UL bit was flipped locally admission correct and this was the interface so this would be unique understanding so because of privacy and security concerns Post may create a random interface identifier using the MAC address as a base, correct? Understanding? Mm -hmm. So, this is considered a privacy extension because without it, creating an interface identifier from a MAC address allows activity to be tracked to the point of connection. Security device, correct? So, I can make out this is a MAC address, so I can track which device it is, yes. correct? Because, because this ID is rendered on the basis of your MAC address. Yes, sir. Windows XP implements this capability. Yes, so, now the types of addresses are MPV6. Have you know in class we have IPv4? We had class A, class B, class C, we are the ranges, we are the subnets, core updates, we are the subnet mask. Over here, then we are public address, private address, and ABIPA address, correct? Over here, we don't have something like that. Something We are totally something different. There are three types of IPv6 addresses. We'll see them one by one, okay? Now, mostly you know when you write IPv6 address, it's like global prefix, subnet ID, and interface ID, correct? It's not compulsory that you should define interface ID by using ER64. I can define my own also. You can also define the interface ID. Okay. Three types of IPv6 address are unicast, that is global <coughs> unicast, link local, and site local. But now it is deprecated because you know if I compare them with your IPv4 addresses, global unicast is like your public IP address. Site local was like your private IP address. Now see here, why we got IPv6? We don't know NAT, correct? What NAT does? NAT does actually private to public. So if I keep your private IP address in IPv6 also, so again I need the help of NAT, correct? They convert private IPv6 address to public IPv6 okay, address, okay. that means it is deprecated, no more use now, site local. Yes. And link local, which is new, we can say it is similar to APIPA, but not exactly. APIPA, you know what? If a DHCP server is down, in that time, what IP address your system get? Have you seen the IP address of 169.254? Uh, let me show you. If it's there in my laptop coming over here, if you config slash all. Have you seen ever seen this address? Something like this. This address comes from APIPA in a Windows network. When the conditions, see I am saying, when the DSC server is under some maintenance issue or it is down and the clients are waiting to get IP address from DSC server, so they have request timeouts and they get IP address from the APIPA. APIPA is a big bucket in which 169.254.0.0.255.255 entire block of class B is kept reserved. That is automatic private IP address. But this happens only in Microsoft networks, not in Unix and Linux. Okay? Oh, EFP or DSC server is down, or might be you know some issue. Like for example, you have got 100 machines and you have a given a range of only 80. So first 80 get IP address. What about the rest 20? They get IP from OP power, but it's just uh, the IP given to your machine just to make it happy. With that IP, we can't access the internet. It is automatic private IP address. Okay? So link local is somewhat similar to that, but it's totally different. Because see, OP power comes automatically. Link local also comes automatically. Once I enable uh, interface for IPv6, 
automatically it gets the IPv6 address. <laughs> now let me check again. Does my system has got some IPv6 address? Now let me see. See, this is the physical address. That's okay. This is okay. 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 No, I don't have any any IPv6 address. I'm just checking that. Ah, yeah. Can you see this FPC0? This is something I like to show you. FPC0. If you see, can you see this? Yeah, this I'm having. See, link local IPv6 address. Can you see link local? Mm -hmm. Something FP80 colon colon then 4508955C DA80 E3B8. Can you see? Yeah. So this address comes automatically. Okay, this address comes automatically. automatically. Now, any I'll show you how this address has been created. Okay, within some time I just show you that how it's been generated. Okay, so getting <coughs> so my system has got one IPv6 address. See here again, IP eight zero eight five nine C three one eight seven. Can you see something over here? Yes. Okay. So we'll see that later how it just calculated. So there are three types of unicast addresses, and there is multicast. Yes, and anycast. What is anycast? The types of communication in IPv4 was anycast, no, no, so anycast, no mistake. It was unicast means what? One to one, multicast to group and broadcast. In V4 we don't have broadcast, we have only multicast, unicast Any. and anycast. Anycast means one to nearest. One. We'll see this very soon, one to nearest. So unlike IPv4, no broadcast. So that is however an all nodes multicast address which serves essentially the same purpose of broadcast. You know, now you know what is multicast actually? Multicast is the type of broadcast only, correct? The work of Malias is similar to the broadcast. Mm -hmm. After seeing the layer 3 and layer 2 info, we discard it. So, now global unicast address, see how it goes. First, your global prefix, 48 bits, submit ID. A unicast address is an address that identifies a single device. Okay, unicast means a single device, it identifies, correct? So, if you see, registry till here, IPSP prefix up to here, site prefix, and then your submit prefix up to here. Then your interface ID can be anything. You can give it TO64, you can do it manually also. A global unicast address is a unicast address that is globally unique. Globally unique. 11.1.1.1 .1 is globally unique, correct? Okay. Single IP. Same way, a global unicast address has a global scope. We see all the scope of global scope. Also known as global aggregatable, other name. And globally unique and can therefore be routed globally without no modification. So, globally unique or global unicast address is like your uh, public address of your IPv4. It's like your public IP address of IPv4. See, it is routable, correct? Globally routable. So, global unicast IPv6 address is like your IPv4 public address. Let's see this. Host portion can be, is also known as interface ID. It can be anything. So, host can have more than one IPv6 address. Yes. So, new thing in IPv4, a PC can have multiple IPv6 addresses. In IPv4, I can assign only one IP, correct? In IPv4, I can assign only one IP address to my interface, to my host okay. or router interface. In IPv6, I can have multiple addresses to a single host. Multiple addresses to a single host. Okay. So, see, this will be the same. Interface ID, I keep on changing, correct? I can have, I can have anything. So, address more correctly identifies an interface on a host than a host itself. So, address identifies your interface than your host. So, a single interface can have multiple IPv6 <laughs> addresses and can have an IPv4 address in addition. So, uh, my laptop interface can have an IPv4 address as well as IPv6 address. Let me show you. Window R, NCPA or CPL. Uh, let me go to my network settings. Uh, if I go over here, inside, now there is a cable connected, but let me show you the options. Can you see IPv6? This is what it can be. And can you see IPv4? So, I can have both the addresses on my laptop, on my interface, on my host. Understanding? Mm -hmm. Another big difference between IPv4 and V6 is the location of the submit identifier. In class A, network, host, host, host. Class B, network, network, host, host, host. Class C, network, 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 and then host. But over here, it is perfect. Submit identifier is a fixed thing. So, submit identifier is a part of the network portion of the address rather than the host portion. Right? So, this is my submit, entire submit, okay, identifier. So, allow the organization to use up to how much? This many individual subnets. So, one single IP. See, 16 bits, correct? Mm -hmm. 2 to 16 is how much? 6, 5, 5, 3, 6. So, single organization can have so many subnets. Is this amazing? Awesome. So, global unicast prefix assignment. See how it is. The provider. See, first, 
3 bit suffix which says 0, 0, 001. Now, what is 0, 0, 001 actually? It is 2. So, your global unicast prefix always start with 2. The current global unicast address assigned by INA use the range 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3 because 2 is fixed. The start with always same 3 bits. The 4 hexadecimal digits before the first column, correct? Then, more easily is recognized something like this, correct? 0, 0, 1, 0, correct? Or 3, 0, 2, or 3. I can assign global unicast IPv6 address as a public and global unique IPv6 address. No need of natting. This is 18, 12.5% of the total IPv6 address space and is the largest block of assigned addresses. So we can use it. No need of natting, nothing. Use it. Okay. And there are regional registries, you know, like Arin, Apnic, Lacnic, then Afrinic and Apnic, correct? See, for different organizations. For Asia Pacific, it is Apnic. For African Asian, it is Afrinic. Ripens is for European countries. Lacnic is, you know, like I think it is. Uh, Lacni is for you know like uh, I'm not remembering it, but it is for Western is you know all this reason like uh, and Arin is for again American something like that. I'm not getting a full form actually, but I had this in my other uh, slides actually. Arin and Lac Lacni, you know like uh, I'm just already getting the word actually. The first word of L stands for uh, Latin Latin America something like that. Something something like that. Okay. So that even even these are the organization which assigns the IPv6 addresses. Okay. So. I can assign one or more IPv6 address range to the RIA. These are my regional in, in, uh, in internet registries. Okay, these are my regional internet registries. So below that, there comes the, all the ISPs. Okay, so see here how much they are shown. Can you see here how they are allocated? See designation and how much prefix they are assigned to each and every one. Can you see here mm -hmm. allocated? Okay, so now see how it goes. I can assign this network slash 12 to Arin. <coughs> That is something uh, Arin, I'm not going to perform now. Region is C. This guy assigns to this guy. Mm -hmm. Then, see here. I can own the entire IPv6 address space, correct? I can assign the rights to registry prefix slash 12 to one of the uh, RI address, Arin in North America. Okay? Now, this guy assigns to the lower layer ISP1, correct? Slash 12 to. Arin has a right to assign any IPv6 address that begins with first 12 bits of hex 2340. Okay? So, 2116 address is correct? Mm -hmm. So now he assigns this to NA ISP1. Okay. So Arin ensures that NA ISP1 meets some requirements and he assigns the prefix of slash 32. So 12 he has explained to slash 32. Correct? To this guy. Mm. Okay. 2 to 96 addresses. So this one address blocks may well be enough public IPv6 address, correct? For the even the largest ISPs. Without that ISP, you are needing another IPv6 prefix. So this prefix I'm assigned to this guy, the lower one. So this one NA ISP1 has got ISP123 like this, okay, ISP, okay. Now, from there, that guy gives it further, correct? A company one asks their ISP for IPv6 address. They assign him slash 40. See, like this. This guy gave him 2340. He assigned 1111 to these guys. And they further assign AAA to these guys. Isn't it awesome? And 2 to 80 IP is for the company. Oh my god. Awesome work. Routers outside North America can have a single route prefix which points to everyone over here, correct? Mm -hmm. When it goes to outside America, in the routing table, all these IPv6 addresses which are assigned in North America, correct? Awesome. Yes. So, this is how it goes. See, yes. uh, NAISP2, South America, the main ICANN, okay, which ICANN is given. Then, Europe, then NAISP1, okay, see here. A uh, slash query prefix assigned to a single company is called either a global routing prefix or site prefix. Now, routers outside North America can have a single route prefix of slash 12 in the routing table for all these IPv6 addresses which are assigned to North America. So, let's see how it goes. So, see, when Europe guys come here, they have a route, one route to this network, which points to everyone over here, correct? Same way, ISP2 also has one route to this guy. So, this says to go to this any network over here, this company 1 or anyone is only a single route. Response to so many devices, correct? Mm -hmm. Understood? Yes. So now, subnetting global unicast IPv6 address inside an enterprise. Subnetting in IPv6. It's not actually like we did in the IPv4, but mm -hmm. a simpler way. See here. The enterprise engineer extended the length to a prefix of assigned to slash 42 slash 64. How? See here. Company 1, subnet 1, 2, 3. This has been assigned to us by the ISP, correct? Right. A, 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 A. Now, what he did? This creates a 16 bit subnet part of address structure like this. Okay, this is the only big one. So here I can make those many subnets. How much? Six five five three six subnets, correct? So there are no concern about needing and all zeros of one subnets in IPv6. Like which was in IPv4. Remember? 
all zero all ones you should consider so 64 bit host field allows to use 64 host per subnet and 64 bit host so so more than address is per subnet correct 2 is to 64 just calculate <laughs> so see now how we calculate how I how I assign it the engineer sp1 which comes over here so on this interface I record IPv6 address so see here this guy assigns the prefix of 001 see this is the subnet okay for this one for this end then for this end I assign 002 within these links then within this link is 3 and over here 4 my work is done so easy so easy for me to do subnetting in class IPv6 is it tough and see the number of IP address you get 2 is to 64 awesome it's fun so note a uh, valid abbreviation is to remove the three leading zeros from the last remember like, I can say it like this a a a one mm. four three two getting okay so now any number of subnet bits could be chosen for subnetting including the interface bits as long as the host will retain enough bits to number all the hosts correct so you can choose any value I can take one two three anything correct a slash one one two prefix help length could be used so instead of running slash 40 I can make a slash or 64 uh, 4x quarters I can make a slash 112 also entirely see and last will be on the interface id so till here I can expand this from this octet to this octet so slash 112 means your 7 subnet 7 segments 7 segments correct I can make it 112 and then only this will be my interface id so even then in that also I am going to get how many hosts 6556 host and one network so see I can make them like this also, correct? Up to like this, 112, correct? So, prefix terminology. Now you know very well, registry prefix is assigned by ICANN to the RIR, is slash 12 to slash 23. And from the lower IC prefix, slash 32. And side prefix, slash 48. And subnet prefix is up to you. Slash 64 is there, but you can make it with anything. What do you want? More than that, correct? Okay? So, understood the global unicast address. Is it awesome? Starts with 2 starts with 2 always ok give me one sec <laughs> ok now let's see link local address you understood that ES64 concept ES64 same is there in link local see here. the first 10 bits are fixed first 10 bits that there was first 3 bits remember in global unicast first 3 here there was first 10 bits that has to be F E 8 0 correct first 10 bits what this is F E and this is 8 so 8 0 first 10 bits Followed by remaining 50 bits zeros. First 10 bits are FE8, then there are continuous 50 bits zeros. So this is up to 64, correct? 50 plus 10 is 64. Mm -hmm. So understood this? See, I am saying it, and you I will get an idea. First 10 bits are fixed, followed by continuous zeros of 64 bits, 54. And the interface ID is nothing but your MAC address with FFP in the middle. Same funda. So see, scope is confined to a single link, uniqueness is assured only on one link uniqueness okay then solves chicken or the egg problem that's we'll see so how do i get a network address if i don't have one to company with that so we'll see this how it goes device can determine its own link local address without needing to communicate with any other device so this link local address comes up automatically this address comes up automatically okay as i said this comes automatically so ethernet link local address uses mac address ethernet link local address uses mac address and consider best practice to study the configure link local addresses on serial interfaces. Best way on serial interface, you configure it. Correct link local address. By saying interface ID concept, remember? Uh -huh. So ER64. So you'll see this. The link local address comes like FE80 colon colon slash 10. Correct? Mm -hmm. Slash 10 that is fixed. Some say it can be also like FEB0 also. Okay? Now, first 10 bits must be something like this. So that is FE80 or 8B. Depends what you want. The curious range like FE8, FE9, FE8, FEB. Okay? You have got options with you. Okay? But most of it is FE8, 0. FE8, 0. Okay? So something like this you will get. Okay? See so if this is FE8, it will be something. FE9 will be this. FE8 will be this one. And FEB will be this one. The binary for B. Now, link local unicast address. How do you see? An identical address might exist on another link also. Not routable of its links. Yes. Now, you know, link local address are not routable. They are not routable. Okay. okay, but there can exist multiple addresses. Why? Because see, router, Ethernet, Ethernet. So they might have a same link local address. Yeah. Oh. So see here. The first 10 bits are always FE8. Devices that do not or have not yet been assigned global prefixes are communicate with other devices with the link local addresses. The link local addresses can communicate. Okay. 
Now, EUS64 or for Ethernet and serial devices to make it unique. We can use EUS64 concept also, correct? To make it unique. So see here, FP80, then colon colon is what? All zeros, 50 of its zeros. Mm -hmm. And see, remember to that, to 1B, E5, FFFE, then B5, B4, A4, 0. We love the EUS64 concept, remember? Mm -hmm. This address comes up automatically. See, this was my global universe address, and this is my link over address. So if you match this thing, it's similar to over here, correct? Say this two both are this two both are things are same because this what I defined. Then I said use EI64 format, okay. so it created this automatically as per my MAC address. Okay. And link local address. So see, FP80 is unique, but see this again, it is same. Can you see? So when communicating with a link local address, the Orgo in interface must be specified because every interface is connected to FP80. So when communicating, you should give show the Orgo interface. Okay. okay. So if you want to ping from one router to its neighbor router using the neighbor link local address. You will be asked to put an interface on which you want to ping. So ping and also you will give the interface name. Because the link local address might be same, correct? Okay. So on which interface you will send the ping. So the router can determine the outgoing interface from a link local destination address. So for interface, by router you have two interfaces. I can't make out which is the, now both will have the same link local address, correct? Mm -hmm. Both are serial interfaces, both will have the same link local address, link local address correct? Mm -hmm. So how do you define? Serial 00, serial 01. Understanding when you are sending a ping to my neighbor. The router can make out what is your outgoing interface. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was the thing. Site local, actually, we don't use it, but let's see what it is. Site local, see, it starts with FPC0, first 10 bits or something like this. Okay. But site local addresses have the same function as IPv4 private addresses. As I told you, global is like your public, mm -hmm. link local is like your APIPA, and site local is like your private. But we don't want it because we don't want natting. It not to be advertised into the internet. Correct. Now deprecated. Why? Because we don't want to have NAT again, private to public. This is to start with always with FPC0 or FPD0. Okay. This guy should start with FPD0 or FPC0. Understanding? Yes. Inka dusra naam tha unique local address. Unique local. Unique local or side local. Okay. So side local FPC0. So not necessarily with the large numbers of global unique addresses, but this is an option. We don't require them actually. As we have got so many global unique addresses, correct? In IPv6, they say I can assign IP to each and every human being on the earth. In IPv6 address, they say I can assign IP address to each and every human being on earth. So many addresses I can have. I can assign something around, you know, like 3, 3 million IP addresses in a square inch of earth. One square inch, I can assign 3 million IP addresses. Those many IP addresses I can get in IPv6. Multicast, now you know very well multicast. In V4 it was 224, something like that. Remember 224, 00, 9, 10, 5, 6, OSP, PIG, blah, blah, blah. Multicast addresses. Identify the set of devices, multicast group. <coughs> so again, source address will be unicast, but the destination address will be multicast. So see here, something like FFOO, colon, colon, slash 8. Can you see? Mm -hmm. So we'll see this. There are some more groups in this. No reserved broadcast addresses, like IPv4. But it does have a reserved all nodes multicast group. That is, this value. FF02 colon colon 1. This says it is a all nodes multicast group. It's like a broadcast. Now multicast, you know, see this, the flag, the concept. FF, flag and the scope. Flag is 0 or 1, permanent or temporary. Scope can be 1, that is the interface local address, link local, subnet local, admin local, site local, organization or global. So, multicast basic, oper uh, basic operation is what? Route discovery, router discovery and address auto configuration. And these functions are part of neighbor discovery protocol. We'll see this later. We'll see this very soon. Okay. Now, the second octet of the address contains the prefix and transient flags. The transient flag is zero is for permanent or well-known multicast address. One is for temporary multicast address. Zero is for permanent multicast address. That is FF. Okay. And FF zero or FF one. Okay. It will be FF zero or FF one. Zero means permanent. It is one. It is temporary. Then your scope. Scope can we see here? Prefix and uh, P and T flags again. There are some more things. Indicates a prefix. This flag allows part of multicast group address to include its unicast prefix or through of the source network. Okay. And scope parameter one is for node for loopback. Two it is for link local similar to unicast. Five is for site local no used. Eight is for organizational scope and E for global scope. So there are some values I'll show you within some time how they are calculated. See. So permanent multicast address, it will be FF0 and the link local scope. Can you see here? 001 is what? 1 is what? Sorry. This is 2 actually. Mm -hmm. Sorry, so this uh, binary. Mm -hmm. It is 2. 2 is what? For link local scope. Mm -hmm. Correct? So there is no detail field in IPv6 multicast packet because the scoping is defined inside the address. 
and the multicast loop ID consists of lower slash 112 bits of the multicast elements. Okay, so it's lower than slash 112. So see here, if I want to send multicast elements to all nodes, it will be FF02 colon colon one. Okay, see, FF02 colon colon one all nodes. Then FF02 colon colon two is goes to all routers. Okay, then FF02 colon colon five OSPF. Remember, it was five two twenty four O five and six. So five six in OSPF also. See OSPF and DR routers. Five and six. Two twenty four O O nine RIP NG. FF zero two colon colon nine. Can you see? Okay. Getting. Yes. Scope is all linked over scope. Correct. Uh -huh. Then EIGRP ten. Here it is A. Mobile mobile agents is B. DSCP server C. All PIM routers multicasting D. Getting. And NTP servers is site local something. FF zero five colon one 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 zero one. So getting. Yes, Understanding so for all routers, all nodes, all the routers. So again, we have got lots of multicast addresses in IPv6 also. Got it? Okay. So FF02 colon colon one, then FF XXXXX solicited node multicast on a link. What does this mean actually? Solicited node multicast on a link. It means the rightmost 24 bits of the corresponding unicast or anicast address of the node. It can be unicast or anicast address. So the 24 bits. Okay. So send on a local link when a node wants to determine the link layer, layer address of another node of the same link, local link is similar to ARP and IPv4, like IP to MAC, MAC to IP, something like that. Okay. So you know ARP process. So this is similar, similar like you know like send on a local link means between two routers when a node wants to determine the link layer address. Link layer means your local link address of another node on the same local link. So I want to know what is your link local address. That time I will send this address. Okay. It's called solicited node multicast. Yes, you make out what is your link local address so that I can see mine is it's not same as yours. It should be unique, correct? Okay, it should be unique. Next, FF zero five one zero one. All network time protocol NDP servers. NDP we keep it for time management. Side local scope again, and unusually assigned radius. So now solicited node multicast address. See now. Now let me drink some water. So now let's see how is it done. If you see that's Router A, B, C. They are the addresses. FF zero two colon one. FF three four five six seven eight. Something like that. Mm -hmm. so see, IP basic address is what two double zero one DB eight. What you are assigned one two three four five six seven eight. Solicited node multicast address. It is FF zero two colon one. And the last twenty bits will be your this address. Mm -hmm. Same way over here and over here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now see what happens. Write most twenty four bits of the unicast or anicast address of the node. Mm -hmm. Okay. So send on a local link address. What we saw. So using IPv6 for address resolution, same like your IPv6 address to MAC address on a LAN segment. Now how it works? Let's see. So in a very rare cases, the rightmost 24 bits of the unicast address of the target will not be unique on a link, but this will not cause a problem. Sometimes they want to be same. Okay, now see here. This guy also got the same thing. This guy also got the same values. Can you see? Hmm. But these are different, correct? 2001 DB8, 501. This is 500. Hmm. And this rest is same, correct? Can you see? Uh, so both of their multicast address is same, correct? Uh, so I'll say node multicast address. Can you see? Yeah? Uh, That's what I said. The right most number bits of unicast address of target will not be unique. But it doesn't make any problem because this address is unique, correct? You see, here it is 501, here it is 500. Okay? So now see, node A desires to exchange packets with node B. So node A sends the neighbor discovery packet first. This guy, see. So I'll say node multicast address, like FF02 of B. Okay. Neighbor solution. I know your IP V6 target IP target IP. This is your correct? What is your MAC address? This is your target IP address, which I know. This one. What is your MAC address? <coughs> it sends to everyone. The packet contains the full IP V6 address of node A is looking for this target address, correct? Now NS is what? Neighbor solicitation. Solicitation. So destination is what? FF02 colon 1 FF plus this value, correct? Mm -hmm. So so all nodes. Both B and C are distributed with the same solicited node multicast address, FFAA, BBBB. So they both receive and process the packet. That target IP address is me. And my MAC address is this thing. Never advertisement, send as unicast. So this is the reply. Because he's the one who is going to reply to this message, correct? B sees that target address matches his own IP address and responds with the neighbor advertisement. Even his MAC address. The target IP address is not me. So NA is not written. So no advertisement is written, correct? C sees that target address does not match its own IP address. C 
so does not respond correct nodes can have the same associated node multicast address on link but not cause issues with never discovery understanding see what i said nodes can have the same associated multicast address see both are having same correct when it sends a associated multicast address both are having same but the ipv6 address was unique correct understanding so that makes any issues over here so understood how multicast address last unicast unicast again and any cast sorry not any unicast sorry my mistake any cast any cast represents a service rather than a device it represents a service like i can they say i can assign this address to multiple devices any cast address you see two double zero what again the same concept okay the same address can reside on one or more devices providing the same service the google servers can have the same ip address yes we one is mumbai one is dubai both have same ip address yes they can have it is called any cast and ipv6 what is this it can be set on one or more devices providing the same service so two devices can have the same ip address however this is a little experience with widespread any cast uses to date so on a cisco router an ipv6 address becomes an any cast address when the keyword is added any cast so that's any cast address so i can assign this address to c here for example this is a router and these are three servers can you see all having the same address for this out he assumes that he can do load he has got three routes to reach this same network hmm. see what it says 20 is the lowest cost to this guy so see the distance of this guy he says i have three routes three paths to reach the same server but cost is different can you see okay can you see hmm. so i use this path he says i use this path because the cost is lower one why see 20 hmm. so all three are using the same service correct hmm. they are same giving the same service for google example The router does not know that it is being addressed by three different devices, because all three are in the same IP address. It assumes that it has got actually three routes to the same destination. Got mm. it? So chooses the lowest cost route, and in this, it is the route via C. Uh, router, uh, uh, sorry, to server C. Mm. Advantage of any cast address is that router always routes to the closest or the lowest cost server. That's called any cast is what one to closest, one to nearest. So if I want to access Google, Google server is in Bangalore, is in Dubai, is in Singapore. All have the same IP address. So first, my question go to Bangalore server. If that is down, then go to Dubai. If that is down, then go to Singapore. But all have the same IP address. So it provides redundancy. Correct? Backup. So that is what your any cast is best part. So today, any queries? Mm-hmm. Now comparing IPv6 addresses with IPv4 address. Many differences, but some similarities also. Let's see the following IPv4 address. One seven two sixteen twelve thirty fourteen fifteen. The summary of four hours is what twelve hours zero slash twenty two. What is the manual summarization which you see? Binary. This is what we get. Hex. So array is in binary and convert to hex. I get something like this. Convert this individual network to hexadecimal. AC one zero something like this. Correct. Now AC one zero slash twenty four is something like this. C D E N F. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So twelve is. C D E okay. Now the summary of these four address will be something like this: A C one zero zero C zero zero colon colon slash twenty two. So you can do summarization. I P V is also. See this. Did you saw this? Okay. So I can make it this way now. So show I P and D brief. See this. This is one correct. And show I P V is in the base brief. This one. I can assign like this. Interface addresses in okay. IPv6. So, using these four networks, we can configure IPv4 and IPv6 Dubai interfaces. So, like this. Notice that the IPv6 Dubai addresses have the interface ID field set to one. This one. Can you see? Okay. On each of the networks. Correct. This is 12.1. This is 0c colon colon one. Okay. So, and then remaining these you know is the MAC address. I do know very well. The <laughs> FFP bit in the middle. Correct. Link local addresses are created. C. Every IPv6 address gets a link local address. Can you see FPS zero? Mm-hmm. And if you see, it is same for all the four loopbacks. Can you see? Physical MAC address. Yeah, because loopback don't have MAC address, but no. you see, it generates automatically. Okay. So they all have a same link local address. Can you see here? Mm-hmm. See FPS zero, two one B, two one B, everything. So all four are the same link local address. Okay. Now, the routers are running OSPF version two for IPv4. Okay, so when I give the command, show IPv6 route. So and show IPv6 route OSPF. See, same thing. Can you see? Shown as slash one twenty eight, correct? <coughs> Understanding? Yes. Sir. And OSPF version D for IPv six. So we examine what happens when IPv four summarization is configured using debug IP routing. See here. 
the area 10 range command is con configured on R1. Okay, see what is delete subnet and says add subnet slash 22. Correct, mm -hmm. this happens in IPv4. You have seen so many times, correct? In IPv4, what about IPv6? Now, area 10 range command is configured R1 to summarize IPv6. See what happens, it adds, then it deletes in V4. First, it deleted, correct? Then it added. See, just go back to site. Over here, it first deleted, then added, correct? Over here, first it adds, then it deletes. <laughs> so, some difference. So, and then show IP, that's okay. Understanding yes. the difference. Now, confirming and verifying IPv6 unicast address. Now, before that, we have to see this topic of neighbor display protocol. Give me one second.